Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for taking part in our um, accommodation webinar that's taking place very, very shortly. Um, this is the third webinar that we are doing in a series of webinars that are taking place um, throughout the, the next few sort of weeks. Uh, the previous two, uh, last week, for example, we covered uh, student life uh, in general outside of the classroom. And earlier this week, we had Carl Oakes from our sports um, team who talked to us uh, about uh, sport at Queen's. So the idea really is to conduct these series of seminars so that you get to know more about things that we offer both in terms of support, in terms of life outside of the university, what you can do, the, the facilities, the services that we offer. And we hope that you find all of this, you know, sort of useful, particularly for those students that are joining us for this year. We understand that it is a very, very difficult climate out there. And we hope that these webinars will provide you and answer the questions um, that you may have relating to student life at Queen's University. So as I said before, there are a number of webinars that we will be hosting over the following weeks. Next week on Tuesday, we have careers and employability. And on Thursday, we have student disability and well-being. Now, both of these are available to be booked and the link is exactly the same page that you've booked the current seminar at. So if you are interested in those topics, they will take place next week on Tuesday and on Thursday at 11 a.m. BST, which is uh, the British Standard Time. Today's uh, webinar, as I said before, is about accommodation at Queen's. And to that end, I have my colleagues here with me. Um, so I will first like to introduce you to my colleague, Raymond Miller. Raymond, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Uh, welcome everybody, thanks for joining us. I can see that people are, are, the numbers are slowly going up, so thank you very much for joining us today. As Radhika says, my name is Raymond Miller. I am the Student Recruitment Officer, the Undergraduate Student Recruitment Officer for Northern Ireland. Uh, and I would also do a bit of work in the Republic of Ireland and other EU countries. Um, so if you have any query, if you're from that area and you have any queries, I'm the person to get in contact with. Excellent. Thank you, Raymond. And also with me today is Michelle Carson from our accommodation team. Michelle, would you like to uh, briefly introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, again, welcome, everybody. Um, we know it is a difficult time and we appreciate you taking the time to um, join us. My name is Michelle Carson. I um, am the Allocation and Bookings Coordinator for Accommodation. So it's me that deals with all of your application queries and that will ultimately allocate your room um, before you come um, to Queen's to study. Um, so any queries or questions, once the um, presentation is over, you will get the opportunity to, to ask me any questions. Thank you, Michelle. And finally, my name is Radhika Longbottom and I am the GB Recruitment Officer. Much like Raymond, I am uh, responsible for going out and, and talking to students who have either applied to us at Queen's or wish to apply to us at Queen's from GB. So that includes England, Scotland, Wales and the islands. Again, if you have any questions specific to uh, within those regions or, or anything relating to student life, then, you know, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, student recruitment at qub.ac.uk would be the most appropriate email address to get in touch with us. So um, without further ado, I will uh, hand over to my colleague, Michelle, who will kick off the presentation now. Thank you very much, Thanks. Michelle. Okay, everyone. Um, so what I'm just going to start with is um, just some information about why you would choose to live with us. So um, just in, in terms of money and affordability, um, Queen's is amongst the most affordable accommodation in the UK. 
and um, we have a varied range of campus locations so of locations of where accommodation is um, and we have city centre um, locations as well. Currently we have over 3,400 bed spaces um, to offer students. We have a range of bedroom types um, and prices available so that that means that we try to um, accommodate all budgets um, and all, and all um, requirements and they range from £75 right through to £124 per week. Lifestyle options are available and I'll talk a wee bit more about them further in the, in the presentation. And lastly, I suppose it's important for international students and, and for GB students and NI you can stay with us throughout your university career. So that option is open to every student. So in terms of locations then, um, the one I suppose that everyone is most familiar with is our Elms BT9, um, which is the biggest, um, the biggest location where we have the most bedrooms. This is, is really where um, the biggest majority of first years will spend their time. Um, you will, you know, you do have the other locations as an option, but this is the, this would be the most popular. So it is purpose built um, student accommodation. And what that means is that, the, you know, we have catered that towards um, life as a student. So we have 53 storied blocks and there typically is 10 to 11 bedrooms on, a flo on per floor. Um, and you also then have access to a communal kitchen and common room. So within the kitchen and common room, you would have um, double appliances. Um, you also have use of the, the, there's a television in there that we, we pay the TV license fee for. Um, there is a choice of room type. So you do have standard rooms, which is shared facilities. And then the biggest majority of our rooms are en suite. So you have your own suite, your own um, shower um, and toilet facilities in the room. We do have an active residential life programme. And again, I will expand on that further in the, um, in the presentation. At BT9, we do have on-site parking. We have limited spaces. So we have about 80 spaces um, and they are first come, first served. Um, and they are, you're charged 70p for a 24 hour period or else 70p every time you go in and out of the car park. And then the all-inclusive price, again, I'll expand on that further. Um, I just have a short video that I want to show you, and it is just about, um, it is a student who lived with us, um, and she, she's just giving you a bit of information and an insight into life at BT9. Hi, my name's Kat and I'm a student here at Queen's. I've lived in Queen's accommodation for three years and I'm about to show you around. This is Queen's reception area. Here is where you will get your keys and collect any posts that you have. The staff are all really friendly and you can go in with any sort of kind of problem and they'll be happy to help. So this is the reception area and you would collect keys here or collect any post if you have any. If you have any queries, you can talk to anyone. If you have issues with finance, there are people to talk to upstairs. It's very friendly and very open and 24 seven. There is one taxi company that can come into Elms at any time. That is Value Cabs. So Value Cabs are allowed into Elms premises, but no other taxi company can. And the parking around here is really cheap. It's 70p a day. You'll find students come in and out and they'll have guests stay. Elms is really big. Uh, we have loads and loads of blocks and all of our blocks are named after trees. So the treehouse is the main uh, social hub for students. It's where students gather to like have fun, play games with pool tables, ping pong tables. There's a free tea and coffee bar every evening. There's like a great study space. The laundry facilities are here. It's just the main social hub and there's like so much to do in here all the time. I've met some of my best friends from just coming and hanging out in the treehouse. This is Chestnut Crescent and uh, there are seven buildings around here. Six of them are premium ensuite buildings and one of them is a premium standard. We would use a fob and the fob is just on the doors. Each student will have their own fob and they will show it at night time to security guards at uh, the main reception so only students who live here can actually get in through the door. 
There's 24-7 maintenance available in Elms and if there's an emergency, maintenance comes, comes up pretty quickly. I love this little staircase because uh, it's just really pretty. It's always really green around here and you can see loads of wildlife, like foxes and badgers and squirrels and different types of birds. Beach 1 and Beach 2 tend to be quiet living because they're right beside our neighbours who are not students. And quiet living is great for students with like sensory issues such as like autism or students who just want to focus on their studies and don't want to go out and party that much. Um, but there are loads of blocks which just have um, what we would say no lifestyle preference, meaning that uh, like anyone can live in them and there are no restrictions in terms of like quiet living or whatever. So no matter where you are on site, it's sort of generally expected that people are reasonably quiet after 11 because people are trying to sleep. We have a good few bike stores, that's one of the main ones, and then there's one up beside reception. So it's a good way for people to get to class because it's like cheaper to run than a car, it's good exercise. We're now in an area called Rowan Gardens. I love Rowan Gardens because this building here, it's where I lived in first year. Um, and the reason that I stayed in Elms and uh, I have such amazing memories. I had the best flatmates and the most amazing time whenever I lived there. So we're currently in Sycamore Park, which has 10 different buildings in it. However, this leads up to Ash Avenue uh, and Ash Avenue would be the largest area in Elms. It has 13 blocks in it, most of which have 33 rooms. It's pretty easy to like figure your way around the site. Once you first get your key, there's a map on the key that will tell you where everything is, where the tree house is, where your building is. Uh, people are really helpful if you want to ask for directions. There are tour guides and uh, the residential assistants are about during check-in and it only takes a couple of days to get your bearings. We're gonna go up here and this is Holly Grove. I lived in Holly Grove last year and I absolutely loved, loved it. I thought it was great. In Holly, everyone shares the same common rooms, whereas in the other buildings, the common rooms are all uh, split up between the different floors. We're still on Ash Avenue. Like I said, Ash Avenue is absolutely huge. That's actually the back entrance to the treehouse. There's a barbecue area back here where students can uh, have barbecues or um, we'll play games. There's a basketball hoop. And it's just a nice area in the summer because there's nice shade, it's not too hot, it's not too warm, it's generally quite bright. And also over here we've got our eco garden. Students will plant flowers and herbs and vegetables and stuff and anything grown in this garden is free for students to take. Everything in Elms is interconnected. There, like you can get from one end to the site to the other, I would say in less than three minutes. I find walking a very calming thing to do. So I tend to get up sometimes if I can't sleep at two in the morning and just walk around. And it's completely safe to do that because uh, security are on 24 seven. Well, if we go back up this way, we're pretty much back right at the start. We started over there in the reception area. Then we came up here, went to the tree house, and now we're here. It's just one big circle. I hope everyone. I hope everyone find that helpful. It was. It's just an insight um, into um, into the site and and what we have to offer you. So some of our other locations, our other locations are um, two um, buildings in the city centre. So we have BT One, which is um, at College Avenue, and we have BT Two, which is based at McClintock Street. So it it is a bit of a different setup. Um, than what what will be at BT9. So we have we have what we call cluster flats, and those cluster flats are made up um, of between three and six bedrooms. So the maximum amount of um, students that you're sharing with would be five. Um, it, they're all ensuite rooms, and um, it's still a 15 minute walk to the main campus um, from the city centre as it is from from the BT9 location. Um, the difference with, uh, with the city centre is that we do have studio apartments. Um, and again, they, the, the studio apartments would be for either returning students or for postgraduate students. It wouldn't be something that would necessarily be available for a first year. 
Again, in the locations, we have the proactive residential life program, which again, I'll, I'll speak about and the all inclusive prices. So that's just some images of our single ensuite um, bedrooms in the city centre and the common rooms. And that's our studio apartment. So as I mentioned before, um, the all-inclusive package. So an ensuite room um, is £124 per week. And um, what, what is included in that and what do you get? So all of your utilities, so your hot water is available um, 24 hours a day. Um, and this is, this is at BT9 because there is some differences between the all-inclusive package and the city centre. Um, and controlled heating times. So the heating will come on at specific times throughout the day. There is a weekly clean. So our staff will go into the common rooms um, and the kitchens on each floor. Um, and if they can, they, they, will, they will clean. You know, they're not there. They won't be doing your dishes. Um, however, they will be cleaning down the worktops, um, cleaning the, the, the cookers and doing, doing the floors as well. As I mentioned, there is a television in the kitchen and common rooms and the, the license fee is included in your, in your fees. And um, so you also get a free off-peak membership to Queen's Sport. Um, and we also have a gym in BT1 so that you're, you also have access to that. So if students in the city centre don't want to go to the PEC centre, then they can avail of the facilities there in BT1. We offer a contents insurance package and the details of which are on our website um, and you can get that information. And there is also the opportunity to upgrade that if you have um, more expensive items. So for example, if you have a MacBook that you'd want to add on to it, you can certainly do that. And all of that information is provided whenever you check in. Um, probably one of the most important things is the Wi-Fi. And um, so that includes, again, that's included in, in, your, weekly, in your weekly fee. And that is um, in your bedrooms and in the common areas. The lifestyle options, which um, Kat mentioned in the video. So we've got three options here for lifestyle. So there is a single sex option. There is a quiet living option and there's no alcohol and they're all very self-explanatory. There is a question it will ask you on the application and you just need to indicate then if you if you want one of those options you indicate which one is applicable to, um, to you and you can only choose one. So there's support from our residential life team and that comes um, with weekly events, trips, um, we, we do trips away and we sign post to support services within the university and also externally. Um, at BT9, our reception is open 24 hours a day. So there is a, a Queen's member of staff available, available to you at all times. Um, and that includes at weekends. And we open over Christmas as well. So that's um, 365 days a year. In terms of paying your fees, there are payment plans. So as part of the application, it will ask you how you want to pay. Now, I, I know at the minute that that's probably not something that you're going to know the answer to, but it can be changed once you arrive. It can be changed once you get your head around it. So we, we do have payment plans based around the student loan payments. So there's, there's options to pay in full. You can pay in two installments and um, you can pay in three installments. And that is the, the most popular option because it is based around when the student loan payments are issued. And then you can also pay in seven direct debits as well. So this is for BT1 and BT2, everything is exactly the same. The only difference is that with our, um, our staff, reception at both of these city centre locations closes at 10 p.m. After that time, we do have our safety team available so that there's um, a safety team available all uh, after that. So if you get locked out, they will be able to let you back into your room. Um, and they also um, control who comes in and out of the building after that time. 
So we are open sites up until 11 o'clock in the evening, so you can come and go as you please. Um, so at, at, over all of the locations, after 11 o'clock, you must show your student card and you must show your key fob. And, and that way, you know, then we're, you know, we're able to guarantee all of, all of the students' safety. And just on that, um, we pride ourselves in offering a safe place to live. Um, as Kat said in, in the video, you know, if she couldn't sleep, she would get up and walk around the site at two o'clock in the morning. And that's, that's absolutely fine. A lot of students do um, do that. You know, in BT9, we have a safety team based there um, and they actually patrol the site throughout. The, so there will always be two um, guards that will patrol the site. And so, it, so it is a very, a very safe and secure um, environment um, to be able to do that. The secure door access, again, was mentioned in the video. So whenever you check in, you will be given a key fob and the information on that key fob is unique to you. So it will only allow you into the building where you live. It will only allow you onto the floor um, that you've been allocated to. And then it has it will allow you into your bedroom. So it is a computerized system. Um, and it will so if, for example, if you try to get onto the ground floor, it will tell it won't allow you, but then it will tell us if someone has tried to access an area where they don't have um, where they don't have permission to be. We proactively manage noise and antisocial behavior. You know, we're not going to say that they're that it is a quiet site because you know that that's not reality of living with multiple people um, but we do we do manage it proactively as kat said we have the locked bike shelters so if you do purchase um a bicycle you can you can lock it away securely and also as as, as i mentioned the contents insurance that's provided by Ensley insurance So the residential life team, the residential life team um, are made up of residential life coordinators and we also have residential assistants. Kat that done the video for us was a residential assistant for three years. Um, so students are employed after that can be employed after their first year, you can apply to be a residential assistant. Um, and what happens is that you provide us with 15 hours um, of your time on a weekly basis. That can range from manning the coffee bar in the evening in either of the locations where in the social spaces, so in the tree house in BT9 and in the social spaces in BT1, BT2. Um, it could be that you go on a trip at, on a Saturday or Sunday, so they will Go, they will go places like the Game of Thrones, they'll do a Game of Thrones tour and they might go to the Giants Causeway. They might do a day trip to Dublin and um, you can see there that they went to Tato Park and the zoo. So there's a range of things and, and we do that throughout the academic year. And um, the RAs are then offered free accommodation. So for students, that's a, that's a big, a big thing. Um, and they actually, you know, they get a lot out of the, the resident being a residential assistant in terms of experience and, and then moving forward into your career and, and how that looks on your CV. Um, there's opportunities for students to make friends from right across the world. Um, this year in accommodation, we had over 70 different nationalities. So it's great that what you know that when students come together and you can, we do cultural food events. And um, so a student would bring a dish that would be um, from their country and, and it just gets everybody talking and everyone interacting. And we do competitions and quizzes. And um, there's three weekly trips to, the, to local supermarkets. So we do have a small supermarket on site and one that is just within a two minute walk um, of BT9. Obviously in the city centre, you're, you know, you're, it's, it's quite easy and there's quite a lot of shops there. Um, but BT, BT9, if you're wanting to do, if you want to get a lot of stuff, we do um, free weekly trips and, and, you know, where you can get a lot of the heavier stuff. So a bus collects you and then a bus will bring you back onto site again. As I said, we've over 400 events throughout the year um, and at least half of these are at the weekend. So it's not just 
Monday to Thursday night that we offer um, any, you know, some activities. It is over the seven days. The free coffee bar in all locations, and that's open every evening. So, you know, um, and it serves free tea and coffee. So from five o'clock in the evening to 11 o'clock at night, you have that opportunity to, you know, to step away from studying and, and get a cup of, tea, cup of tea or coffee um, and speak to people then. We did do a, co a cost comparison. I mean, I think what's quite important is that the price that you pay is, the, is basically the price that you pay. There's nothing else included in that. In terms of, so, you know, even from a maintenance point of view, so if the light bulb stops working in your room, you go online, you give us your student number and it pre-populates where you live. You tell us what the issue is and then we go out and fix it. Um, this is just a comparison for the private sector. So it, you are into um, a longer tenancy. So it is, a, it is for a year. You know, that the price that's there doesn't include your Wi-Fi. It doesn't include the heating and hot water. So we think it's really important that, you know, it's something to highlight. Um, and yes, you know, when you, when you hear £124 a week, it does sound expensive. But when you think of everything that it includes, and that you literally don't have anything else um, that you need to hand out. I suppose that, you know, it's, it's better for planning and for budgeting. What happens next? Um, I suppose everybody needs to, obviously applications are open and they have been from February. So if you are planning to come and stay in accommodation and haven't applied already, I would advise you to do that as soon as possible. The application is very um, quick. It will take you less than 10 minutes um, to complete it. You will get, you know, you'll get an email through to say that we have it, we have received your application, but you won't hear anything else from us until after um, the results come out. I know that this year it's all a bit different, but the results are still coming out at the same time. So we will then start sending accommodation offers um, from that Thursday of results day, and we work through that weekend. Um, you, for um, all first year students, you're guaranteed accommodation, um, and any GB students that would be coming through clearing would be guaranteed accommodation with ourselves as well. When we do send you the offer, it is only a two day response time, and that's just so that we can make sure that you know, we're getting through everyone that has applied and making sure that we, we are able to offer um, all accommodation and, and try and get the process done as quickly as possible. It is a manual process, so it's not um, as easy as hitting a button and, and it just sends everybody an accommodation offer. It is a manual process where we physically have to allocate the room to you. Um, so, and we can only do that once you have been accepted onto your um, academic course. So our system, the accommodation system talks to the academic system. And once you're updated as being accepted, it, you will then show on our system um, to be offered accommodation. The last thing then that I would say to you is follow us on Facebook. I mean, there, there's something that, that, um, going on all of the time. We will put information on there that we think is relevant. And um, should it be the prospective students or the students that are currently living with us? Um, you know, not just Facebook, but we have it. We're on a, um, Twitter and on Instagram. And if anyone has any questions, um, Raymond will direct them to me and I'll hopefully answer everything that you might have. Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, I have just opened the chat box there. So anyone that's with us and you want to ask any questions, you can fire away now. Um, just in terms of what you've gone through there, Michelle, it was really, really helpful. So thank you, thank you for that. I guess it's good to know that the accommodation includes a lot of other stuff. It's not yes, just a bed yes. or four walls. So you know, you're getting security and safety. You're getting the opportunity to meet other people. So I guess students just have to feed themselves. You cover the rest pretty much. Yes. That's it. Yeah. We draw the line at, at making the pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, questions are starting to come through now. So 
Is it possible for a first year student to get a studio room? Um, we, my concern with that would be that there, there's no access for students then to go to a common room or to, to mix with other students. Um, yes, it is there as an option for you to apply, but I would consider it because once you close that door, that's you in that room by yourself unless you decide to go down to the coffee bar in the evening time. And for a first year student who's away from home for the first time, that is that that's a big, a big, you know, it's a it's a big thing. Um, but yes, you, you do have um, the option. However, obviously our postgrad students would would have priority over over first year undergrads. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Does every room have a window? Yes. Okay, that's how, that's how I'm covered. There'll be plenty of light coming in. Perfect. Yes. Um, if you put Queen's as your insurance choice, should you still apply for accommodation now? That's a good question. Absolutely. And and I answer yes to that. We get to ask that question a lot. Yes, because to make the application, it doesn't cost you anything. The only time that you pay us any money is after we send you the offer and you're happy with the offer. And to confirm your acceptance, you pay the £300 deposit. So yes, if Queen's is your insurance, because how we allocate or how students show on our system to be allocated is number one, by the date that they have applied for accommodation. Yeah. And secondly, when they're accepted onto their course. Okay, great. Uh, another one here. Do I need to have accepted my offer in order to apply? No. You can apply now as long as you as long as you have um you know made queens or, or applied for queens for an academic course yeah you will still you will be on the system and you can apply brilliant this is a question just about having people coming over to stay so uh, are you allowed to have visitors stay in your room yes you are so there is an online form that you complete so you can only have one person stay at a time um, and it's different for different students. So international and GB students will get a percentage of room nights um, based on their contract. So I think it works out at about, I think it's around 60 nights that you can have someone to stay, okay. not consecutively. If it's over a three night period, you do need to get approval from a member of the management team. And that's just really for us to control who is coming in um, and, and going out. Um, Northern Ireland students get six room nights a month. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Can we change our preferences if we've already submitted our application without losing our place in first come, first serve allocation? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's from the date that you make your application. Um, and if you want to change your preferences, um, I think my email address has gone on to um, a WhatsApp group somewhere. So I have been getting plenty, I have been getting a lot of emails from students that do want to change. So um, you can, if you want, Raymond, you can give my email address then and they can, you know, that can come through to me. Okay, perfect. I'll, to that particular question, I'll just send through your, your email address. Thanks. Yeah. Um, are you likely to get to share with the person that you put down on the application? It really does depend. So as I explained before, um, it depends to, when, when you're when you show on our system to allocate the two factors are number one, when you apply and secondly, when you're accepted onto your course. So if there's maybe three or four people that are wanting to live together, we do want to facilitate that. Um, but it could mean that maybe one person has been accepted onto the course and the other person hasn't. So that's when it becomes harder to manage. And that would be the only reason why it wouldn't work if someone has been accepted after everyone yeah. else. We only started that last year and it, do, you know, it can become an issue if someone is, is later in being accepted onto the academic course, but we sure. do try our best. Uh, will a flat will a flat all be students of the same year? Yes. So if you're first year undergrad, you will be sharing with first year undergrads. 
Perfect. So this question is about postgraduate accommodation. So, I mean, this webinar is more catered toward current undergraduate offer holders, but if you can just speak briefly about yeah. um, postgraduate accommodation. Um, postgraduate accommodation, um, so it's the city centre mainly, that, and we have off-site houses, um, and we, you know, we have other, other locations that postgraduates would be eligible for. Willow Walk, which is within the BT9 facility, um, is, um, is an area that is made up of studio, one bed, two, three and four bedroom apartments. They're all self-contained, so they have their own front door. Um, so there, if, if whoever a, a student wants to go on to the website, there is a postgraduate section and it will list where, um, where is eligible or where postgrads are eligible to apply for. Sure. There's another question there about elaborating on Willow Walk for postgraduate students, but you've just done that. So thank you very much for that. Uh, do you have to apply for insurance if you're in BT2 or does it come in the price? It comes in the price. So whenever you check in, you will um, you that you are then automatically covered by the contents insurance. We will provide you with information. Um, as I said, you can up, you, you can upgrade it. So if there are specific high value items that you that you have that you want to insure, um, you can do that separately. But once you check in, that's you covered. Okay, great. Um, what makes Queen's accommodation a better option than other student accommodation? I think it's the support and what we what we have in place. I mean, we have been doing this a long time. Um, you know, the residential life team are fantastic at what they do. Our facilities are updated. You know, this year we're um, upgrading half of Willow Walk as an example. So there's a number of apartments that are being upgraded. We do have a seven year cycle. So every seven years there will be areas that will be um, refurbished and, and we put, you know, the, the residential fees that you pay are put back into the accommodation to make sure that everything is looked after. I mean, the, it's simple things like the maintenance, um, you know, if the, for example, if the heating stops working, as I mentioned, or your light bulb goes out, that we do that for you. We take the stress away from that, from all of yeah. that. Um, and I know that it sounds, it sounds oh, it's a light bulb, but it, it really, you know, it's maybe something that would, you know, you might not be able to study if, you, if your light wasn't working. Exactly. You know, within a couple of hours or within half an hour, we could have someone over and it would be fixed. Yeah. Um, uh, perfect, thank you. Um, do you know the prices for standard rooms for autumn 2021 students so for next year's entry are the prices going to be the same or potentially changing that hasn't been discussed yet and that is normally set um around november time so november of 2020 um there will be a discussion um and it will it, it goes to senate um so the university will then make a decision at this stage, I don't know. Our prices have stayed the same for the last two years, um, so I, I don't. I honestly don't know, and I can't answer that question. If there would be an increase, if there is an increase, it's slight. So you yeah. you know, maximum you're looking is about three percent. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, this is from a current sixth year student who is studying AS, so lower sixth. When would they need to apply for accommodation? So they're so they would be a twenty twenty one entry. Yeah. Yeah. So applications normally open end of January, um, start of February for the September for the following September. So January February twenty twenty one, and and there will be plenty of information sent out to schools, um, and that you know they will probably have visited us at, at some point before then as well. Great. Great. Again, we're touching a wee bit on postgraduate, but we'll, we'll try and answer it for this person. Which of the three accommodation is preferable for an international postgrad student? 
It really is personal choice. It depends, number one, where you want to live. Um, Willow Walk in, in BT9 is very quiet. Um, whereas city centre, I'm not saying that inside the accommodation isn't quiet. It's different. It's a different type of accommodation. So it's a studio, it's a studio bedroom. So you have it's it's one room and you have everything, everything there. Um, you're close to the shops, you're close to restaurants and bars, whereas BT9, you would have a, you know, you might need to catch the bus into the city centre or a taxi would, would take you five minutes. It depends what the individual circumstances are. Sure. Um, we have found that postgrads like both and it, it, it you know, will a walk is always ha and all, always has been and always will be popular. We fill it every year. Um, and postgraduates are wanting to be in the city centre. You know, a lot of the, and it's a lot of medical students. I don't know whether it's closer to the NBC, but a lot of postgrad medical students are wanting, you know, to 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 be in the city centre as well. Okay, so personal preference, really. It is, yeah. It's very individual. Yeah. It's not really something that that we can tell them. Um, and there, if they go on to the website, um, Raymond, there are virtual tours of all of the locations. So that can that can help greatly. Perfect. Is it possible to change your accommodation op options after seeing this webinar? Uh, yes, you can. Right. And Raymond will send you my details if you want to email me and I can do that. Uh, I can do that for you. Michelle, is that your personal one or an accommodation one? If you send it to my personal, no, send okay. it to my personal one, yeah. No worries, I can send that out. Uh, what if three students from the same country want to live together? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes, and I suppose going back to my my, my um, answer before, it, it really does. We, we do want to facilitate that, but there are factors that can impact it. As I said, you know, when you're accepted onto your course and when... Um, when you applied so if you all applied at the same time that's fantastic but then it does matter then that then goes back to when you're accepted onto your academic course okay how will parking be allocated so we have very few car parking spaces on site at bt9 and um, these are reserved primarily for Blue badge holders, so it's if we have any disabled students that are living with us. Um, how it works after that is on first come, first serve, so it works on when you applied. Sure. Um, let me see. When are the applications? Sorry, that's the same question I've had. Is Elms BT9 ever oversubscribed? And is accommodation dependent on your postcode? No, so there's there's um, there's no postcode allocations, um, and there hasn't been for the last two years. Um, when we opened the new accommodation in the city centre, we guaranteed all first year students um, accommodation. So if you were applying and you lived on the Lisburn Road. And um, you were able to get accommodation with their cells. And um, so that the, the postcode allocation doesn't apply any longer. Um, you, I don't know if you have had information about this one just yet, Michelle. Uh, it's regarding Irish students. Mm -hmm. So what happens accommodation offers for Irish students with the results being delayed until October? Are you in a position to answer that at the minute? I'm not. To be okay. honest, I I, do, I don't know the I don't know the answer to that. No, I know the university. Just in response to that question, the university is working on that at, proactively at the moment, and um, so we will be able to get an answer to you about that in due course. But thanks for the question. Uh, which accommodation building would be the best for a dental student in terms of proximity to the dental school? Um. Well. I take it that's NBC. Is it NBC that, or do they? Yeah. Do yeah. And if you're going between the NBC and the Royal, um, BT One is right is right beside the main bus route that would take you up to the Royal. Um, but then BT Two is is slightly closer to where the NBC is. 
um, BT9, if you're trying to get from the Malone Road to the Royal, it's a, you know, it can be a bus into town and then another bus um, to get to the Royal. So I personally think city centre is probably the, the easiest option. Okay. Another question here about editing your preferences. I'll just send this person your email address. Okay. As a GB student, uh, I've heard lots of students go home at the weekend. Are there still lots of people in, in accommodation over the weekends or does it empty out? Good question there. It is a good question. And it, again, it's one we get asked every year. Um, yes, students go home at the weekend. I'm not going to say that they don't. However, um, you know, the split of Northern Ireland students, international students and GB students, that there's still there is still a buzz about um, all locations at the at the weekend, and the reason that we put the events in place, so the we, the reason that we do the trips, is to keep students that are living you know seven days a week with us that they have something that they can plan, um, they have something that they can involve themselves in with the other students that are left. What we won't do is, you know, we wouldn't allocate um, an international or a GB student on a floor that would be potentially all students from Northern Ireland, because but students from Northern Ireland, some of them get jobs in Belfast, and they, they you know, they're working over the weekend um, as well. So not every Northern Ireland student does go home, um, but it, yes, students do go home, but. You know, during the allocation process, we will make sure that you know you're not on a floor where potentially ten other students could go home at the weekend, and we have other things in place that, to hopefully make sure that you're not you're not on your own over that period as well. Yeah, great. Uh, just to let you know, folks, we are about halfway through the questions here, and we're working through them all. So if you asked a question a few minutes ago, we are getting to you. So just bear with us. Uh, this one is from a GB student. They plan on shipping their stuff over to Queens. Would they need to ship it to the accommodation or to somewhere else? Where do they, they send their, their belongings? So they would send it to the accommodation of where they're, you know, where they're going to be staying. So, for example, if they're staying in BT1, they would send their stuff to BT1. Or if they're going to BT9, they would send their stuff to BT9. Perfect. I recently updated my address. I had started my application, but the wrong address is in my personal details section. How can I change this? That needs to be done through UCAS or by contacting someone in our admissions team. So okay. I think there is possibly a general admissions email um, that yeah. maybe we can look at and we can send it to the to that particular student. But it I can it will it will let me update it on my system. But because our system talks to the UCAS system on a nightly basis, it will register that there's something wrong and it will revert it back to, to what was registered through UCAS. Okay, so UCAS and our admissions team, and I yeah. will send our admissions email to this particular student. Uh, next question, the £300 that we pay, presumably that's the deposit, is it Michelle? Yes, yeah. Okay, does it get deducted from the overall cost? It actually doesn't. What happens is that when you check out in June, you actually um, get that money refunded to you. So it will automatically go back onto the card that you had it with in the first place. Yep. How do you recommend to pay the accommodation when in monthly installments or all at once? I mean, I guess that's probably a personal choice, but they're both of them are there. Um, what we find is is that students that are getting um, the the grant system, the maintenance grant, so it's three direct debits, that that would be, um, and if they're going to pay their accommodation out of that grant, it's better that they choose three direct debits. The only time that we tend, that um, people tend to opt for the seven direct debits is if their parents are helping them and it's the parents that are, that are paying that accommodation fee. So it, you know, it just spreads it out over the year um, a wee bit better. But again, it is, it is a personal preference. Okay. Uh, another question just about the, the room prices for 2021 students. 
just to reiterate on that one, nothing has been confirmed yet. There's been no changes in the last two years, yeah. but if they do go up, it would be a maximum of 3%. That's right. Can postgraduate students apply to BT1 and BT2? Yes, they can. Yes. Um, what we do is that we, when, when it comes to allocating, we wouldn't be putting postgrad students with either returning undergrads or first year students. So, for example, BT1 is split into three different cores. So we have um, assigned one of the cores and that will purely just be postgraduate students. Um, what then happens is that the returners and the undergrads, returners we tend to keep together as well, and then first year undergrads would be allocated all in, in flats together. Okay. Uh, um, Raymond, Michelle, sorry to jump in here, but uh, I just wanted to uh, make the postgraduate students that are on this uh, webinar um, sort of, I just wanted to make them aware that uh, I know that Michelle is in discussions with our postgraduate team to, to actually run a very specific uh, webinar that uh, addresses the needs of our postgraduate students. Um, we are very happy to take postgraduate questions here, but I just wanted to make you aware that uh, there are talks of a, um, a webinar being hosted predominantly for the postgraduate students. So um, yeah. I wanted to make you aware that, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Information about that will be available in the postgraduate student section of our website in due course. It's probably going to be around the yeah, it's probably going to be around the start of June that that webinar will take place. Okay, so so that information will be available and uh, specific information relating to sort of postgraduate accommodation will be covered in that. So if you wish to get further information, then uh, please to sign up to updates from our postgraduate team as well. Thank you. Thank, thank and you. Sorry Andrew. to interrupt there. No, fine. That's good information. Thank you. Um, Michelle, someone has asked here, how can I get information for a student with a family? Um, presumably they mean, you know, younger children and, and would yeah. they be able to live in accommodation with them? So I would advise you make the application as normal. There is a section um, on the application that will ask, have you got a family? But um, they need to follow it up with an email. So that particular question, Raymond, again, if you wouldn't mind giving my details to that student no and I would then um, deal with them directly. So uh, again, any family accommodation um, is, is um, managed by myself. No problem. Um, another PG query, just quickly, is there separate accommodation for PG students? And there is. Yes. Um, what is the bed size in BT9? This person is thinking about buying bedding and they wanna know what size to buy. So it's a single bed um, and it's just a standard single um, that you would be buying. Yeah, they're all, they're, they are all they're standard. All the same. Yeah. Um, city centre is slightly different because they are um, queen size. So they're in between a single and a double. Um, so the sheet and the mattress protector can be purchased from us. Um, and then you, it would just be a double duvet and, and double duvet cover that you would that you would buy. Uh, is there a curfew for all accommodation and can first year students apply for BT1 and BT2? There is no curfew at all. So you, can, you are um, free to come and go as you please. What we what we say is that after 11 o'clock, it is a secure site. All that means is that we monitor who is coming in. We don't monitor who is going out. Um, and if you, if, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you can have guests to stay. So our safety team are given a list of students that have um, guests signed in with them. So if you have signed in a guest, the guest must be with you whenever you're coming back on site and we just check ID. And it really is, it's not that we, you know, we're, we're not here to tell you, you must be in by half past one. You can uh, you can come back at any time any time you like, um, but it, it you will be asked to to show ID to get access onto the site. Okay. Uh, does the course that you have applied for affect what room you will be placed into? No, we don't allocate by course at all. Okay. Uh, Unless you're a nursing student. 
and your short term nurses. So they work slightly differently. So if there is any any nursing students that are on, if they have any specific questions, they could probably, you know, if they just let you know, Raymond, and I can answer. Okay. Um, do you have to go to Queen's to live in accommodation? University of Ulster is this student's backup and if they don't get the grades for Queen's could they still live in Queen's accommodation? Yes you can. Yeah so we could you know if you're in Belfast Met or you're going to UU you can you can stay with us. Okay Um. so this is a student I've sent my initial application but I've looked at BT9 and I've been impressed by what you have on offer. Is BT9 open to postgraduate students? Again, that's... It's just the Willow Walk, it's Willow yes. Walk area that it's not the blocks um, where the, you know, unless we get an unprecedented number of postgraduate applications, um, which we did last year. And what we done was we set aside some of the blocks in BT9 because there was such a high demand. Um, so if that, you know, if that, scenario happens then yes that is a possibility but ordinarily no okay um next one how many people do you share a kitchen with in bt9 so bt9 kitchens there's either 10 or there's normally 10 or 11 rooms per floor so you're sharing with 10 other students um they are quite sizable i mean they, they are quite a big kitchen um, you, as I said, you have double appliances, you've got double fridges, um, you've kettle, toaster, microwave. So you have a kitchen area and then it's um, open plan into um, a nice uh, common room. So you have nice um, sofas where, and your television there as well. So there's plenty of room for everyone. Great. Will someone who's accepted their offer have an advantage over someone who hasn't? If they make their application at the same time? Uh, yes, because if you haven't accepted your offer, then you won't show them on the accommodation system for us to be able to offer you a room. Okay. And we can't do that until until you either you have accepted your course or you have been accepted on to your course. Okay. Uh, what will happen if you don't go in September in terms of your accommodation? We would, you would just let us know. So if you decide that you don't want to come to Queen's for whatever reason, um, you can either log in and cancel your application on your accommodation account, or you can just send us an email and ask us to cancel it for you. There's no harm done. Okay. Uh, this is one about people staying over. So if someone does come to stay, where do they actually sleep if you only have a single bed? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, that's good. We do have we do have a limited number of um, blow up mattresses available, and we and you would pay a small fee for the bedding. We would um, rent you the bedding um, for that as well. I think it's five pounds. And um, so yes, but they're in demand. So it, it would be something that you you know you'd need to book in advance. Okay. Uh, this one. What are the different accommodation locations? Which one is most popular? Which one is the most common? I mean, the biggest like as it, and the biggest that I said is BT nine. In BT nine, yeah. we have eighteen hundred rooms, so that's going to be where you're going to find more people. That's not to say that. BT1, I mean, BT1 and BT2 were full this year as well. So there's a lot of students um, about those areas too. Um, it is a personal thing and it's not something, again, that I can that I can um, tell you. Yeah. Um, what it, what's, it, it's really what is best for you. No problem. Uh, I've already made my application. Can I change my lifestyle option now? Again, I'll just send your email address. Yeah. Uh, are rooms allocated at random or do they go by course or faculty? Have covered that, but no, so that it's done the factors are when you applied for accommodation and when you've been accepted onto your course. Um another query about the deposit, but we've covered that. Um so they're asking do they get the, the deposit back? Mm -hmm. 
What is the GB scholarship benefits for accommodation? So I suppose the main one is that you um, are allocated an ensuite room, but you only pay for a standard room. So you pay the £110 um, as opposed to the 124 There are other, you will get a kitchen and a bedding pack um, free of charge. There are some additional features which Raymond might be able to, you might be best placed to answer the rest of that question or Okay, so, you, sorry. You can, yeah, I'm going to jump in here again. Um, so um, just to clarify that uh, the GB scholarship option is available for students that will be joining us in 2020. Um, it excludes uh, medicine and dentistry students. Um, the benefits, the lifestyle benefits scholarship has a number of um, benefits available. The first one that Michelle talked about was uh, in the first year when they stay in university accommodation, they are upgraded to an ensuite room. The second benefit is that they get the kitchen and the bedding pack. The third benefit is that they get um, sort of a bursary or a, 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 a sum of money that enables their transport from uh, GB to Northern Ireland, and uh, that continues for all three years. We also sort of su support um, people sort of move from GB to NI by helping them in terms of providing to uh, ship 30 kilos of their luggage over. And uh, last but not the least, they also get a reduced membership of the PC, which is our gym. Now, just to clarify, this scholarship is available for 2020. It is based on academic achievement. It is available for GB fee payers. Um, so you would need to be classed as a GB fee payer to be eligible for it. The two courses that are excluded from this are medicine and dentistry. You do not have to apply for the scholarship. As soon as you make Queen's University your firm choice at UCAS, you're automatically considered for the GB scholarship. And um, hopefully that should cover everything relating to the GB scholarship. But again, if you have specific questions about it, um, you can either contact me directly on r.longbottom at qub.ac.uk or you can send us an email at our GB scholarship account, which is gbchsch. Raymond, help me out, Kurt. Yeah, C-H- Paul. C-S-C-H-O-L. Yes, G-B-S-C-H-O-L. G-B-S-C-O-L at Q-U-B.ac.uk. I'll send it directly to it. Yeah, so those are the two email addresses. So you can either email me directly or you can use G-B-S-C-O-L. So that's C-S-C-H-O-L at qub.ac.uk to get in touch with us. Sorry about You're that, right. I'm going to disappear right. again now. <laughs> Jump in again if you feel you need to. Um, next question, Michelle. I was wondering if there are, if there is a close, if, sorry, if the city centre is close to Queen's for buying essentials. Say that again, Raymond, sorry. So they're, they're asking about buying essentials and whether the city centre is close to Queen's and close to the accommodation. Um, yeah, so if you're, if, if you're staying in BT9, you can walk into the city centre in about half an hour. There is a bus stop um, right outside the door of BT9 um, and a bus, it, it's less than five minutes to take you into the city centre. Um, there is a Tesco supermarket, so there's a bigger supermarket about a five minute walk away, um, which is on the Lisburn Road, which is the road that runs parallel to the Malone Road. Um, and that's where the majority of students will, will do their, their, their main shopping. What I mentioned in the presentation about the, um, the bus to local supermarkets, Lidl actually put on a um, transport for students. Um, and last year it was on a Tuesday evening 
yeah, so every Tuesday evening, the bus came in, and if you wanted to go to legal, you just got on the bus, went and done your shop, and, and they brought you back to um, on site again. Brilliant, that's good. Uh, do you get unlimited Wi Fi at the accommodation? Yes. Great. If university is not able to start in January, do we have to pay for accommodation in the first semester? Again, this might not be something you know about just yet. The thing, well, going, um, obviously, the situation that, that the university finds itself in, in at the minute is that the biggest majority of our students have gone home. So 70% of students have left accommodation. Those 70% of students have been refunded. So they have been refunded from the 27th of March. I would think that if, if we get to January and there is another lockdown, then the same principles would, would apply. Okay, thank you. Uh, in BT9, if you have an ensuite room, how many kitchens are there in each flat? Uh, and do does everyone share the same kitchen? So even if you have an ensuite room, do you still share the same kitchen? Yes, you do. Yes, so you will share that kitchen with another 10 students. When accommodation is allocated, do we get a list that gives us an idea of what items to bring, e.g. toiletries, bedding, etc.? There is a section on our website um, and it, um, it's called Before You Arrive. So if you click on that and it will give you um, a list of things that we would advise you to consider. Um, if you're coming from, you know, from internationally or from GB, we do have um, the likes of Ikea. <laughs> you know, we, we do have department stores where you can go and buy things, you know, buy your duvets. So I wouldn't feel too much under pressure to purchase a lot before you come over. Um, you know, because it, it can be done and you do have a few days before classes start where you will be able to, you will be able to do that. Okay. Um, do accommodation applications become limited? The only time that would happen is if we feel that we're, we're running out of bedrooms. Um, the, the preferences will become limited. So you might not necessarily get your first preference on your application, but you will get a room. Um, at the minute, it's very difficult to say how, how that's going to pan out. We're only in April and we don't start applications until August. And, you can, and students can apply right up until that point. Our applications are, are high this year in comparison to other years, which is why anyone that hasn't applied already I would be advising them to apply um, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, this person's just looking at a wee bit more information about Mount Charles, uh, mm -hmm. just the cost of rooms, and just a wee bit of information about what Mount Charles is for those that don't know. Okay, so Mount Charles is off-site. Um, it's off-site housing, as we call it. So it is really close to where the main campus is. It would pure Mount Charles this year is purely for postgraduate students, um, so it isn't available to um, to undergrads of any you know not not even returning students. Um, so we have eleven to nineteen Mount Charles, and we also have twenty six to fifty. So these are three storied um, Georgian or Victorian style houses that we have adapted. So they're basically like houses of multiple occupants and um, they house between eight and nine students that depend it just depends the configuration so you're you, you are sharing with less students there are two kitchens per house so there's two kitchens and a common room per house and um, you don't have any en suites it is shared but again the numbers are are lower in terms of the amount of students that you're sharing with Thank you. Is there a notable size difference between the rooms in BT1, BT2 and BT9? They're actually the same size in square meterage, but they but they are configured differently. Um, so BT9 is a very it's a very square room. Um, whereas in BT1 and 2, um, the rooms are they're, they're rectangular, so they they do appear longer. 
um, but the square footage is exactly the same. Okay, thank you. What advantages does a residential assistant benefit from? Um, number one, the experience. You're exposing yourself to um, to quite a lot. You know, you're dealing with with the reason that we have residential assistants. I'll, I'll rewind a bit. Is that a student will talk to a student before they'll, they'll maybe approach a member of staff. Um, and it's good that we, so the residential assistants live in accommodation. So they're there 24 seven as a point of contact for any student, if they have an issue, if they have a problem um, to go to. They also do things like they, they'll check in, they'll be assigned to a number of buildings so, you know, you might have responsibility for ASH 1 to 6 um, and you would be checking on a weekly basis that there hasn't been any tampering with the fire equipment. So that's a legal requirement that, that we have to provide information to say, you know, that the fire extinguishers and the fire blankets are working and, you know, that they're available. Um, you're exposed to all of those different cultures that I talked about because you would be working in the in the coffee bar. So there would be a road drawn up um, and you would maybe have a two hour stint in the coffee bar, or, you know, at an evening time. I suppose the biggest saving is your accommodation fees. Yeah. So you're saving, you know, potentially nearly £5,000. So that's £5,000 less of student debt that you'll have probably at the end of your degree. And it is something, it is, I personally think it is a job. So it's something that you can take forward. You will learn so much um, and that would be, it would look great on a CV. Definitely. So it looks good in a CV and you're saving money. Seems like a, a win-win to me. <laughs> yeah. If, if a, this is quite a good one, <clears throat> excuse me. If a student was staying and uh, in an accommodation block different to Queen's. So if they're not staying in Queen's accommodation, will the student be able to use some of the things that Queen's offer? For example, the laundry room, um, and I guess you could add maybe the sports facilities into that. So if you're not staying in Queen's accommodation, can you still avail of the facilities of Queen's? No, okay. certainly not. Certainly not the the laundry facilities. You can you can certainly then purchase a, a membership for the sports center, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be something that you can that you could just avail of. No problem. Um, let me see. People just looking at change of preferences. I will get back to them. How many people are in a hall or uh, a flat? So in BT9, as I said, the, the max are per, per floor, there's 11 rooms, 10 to 11, depending on some of the blocks. Um, BT1 and 2, the maximum is six. So the cluster flats are made up of three, four, five, and six bedroom apartments. Good. Um, which accommodation is closest to the management building? So Queen's Management so, School, Little Hall. Yeah, so BT9, um, so Riddle Hall is on is in Stranmillis, just off the Stranmillis Road. Um, and unfortunately, if you were to go to the very end of of the our site, um, and but we only have one entrance in and out, so you know you you can't go through um, our site onto the Stranmillis Road, even though it draws back onto it. Um, but it's about a 10 minute walk that would take you into Stranmillis from Anne Malone. Okay, uh, how does accommodation work if you go through clearing? Just exactly the same. We actually um, set some rooms aside for clearing students. Um, again, uh, it, it might not necessarily be your first preference of room, but you are guaranteed, so you don't need to worry. Um, at any time, you, you, will get a bit, you will get a room. Okay. Um, someone said they missed the bit about the deposit. If you just want to go over that again, Michelle. Yeah, so the deposit is paid um, to confirm acceptance of your room. So you have two days to pay that £300 deposit. Once that's paid, that is actually, and once you've accepted your offer, 
that is you entering into the contract with us. And what I will add as well, I'll maybe just take this opportunity, it is a 38 week contract. It doesn't work like a tenancy. So there is no get out clause. There's no, you can't hand in your notice. So you need to consider really carefully before clicking that accept and paying that 300 pounds. We hold on to that 300 pounds until you check out in June. Once you check out, um, that will then be refunded onto the card that you initially paid it with. Perfect, thank you. Uh, do you try to allocate GB students together or are there a mix? There would always be a mix. So we do mix NI international and GB students together. Um, and we're, you know, we're very conscious of, of having to do that. That would really be um, the only the only way that we have, you know, the only allocation, I suppose, rhythm that we have in place. We don't allocate by subject or um, by faculty. It is purely um, by, you know, we, we, we like a good mix of yeah. all, all students on the floors. Great. Uh, how much would an apartment cost uh, a married couple who were both going to the graduate school? It depends on the requirements. So if you want to give that um, person my email address and I'll sure. follow that up separately with an email, Raymond. Okay. Um, if, you, if you've received an unconditional offer, do you still have to wait until results day to be told about accommodation? At the minute, there's an embargo on allocations. So we're not allocating anybody at the minute, even if you have been accepted. We tend not to look at that until July, um, because it is it is um, really early on in, in the process. But again, you will if you if you have an uncondition, unconditional offer, you'll be shown in our system as accept. Um, and when we do start allocations, you will receive something, but not not at the minute. Okay. Do you, uh, are you allowed to have a kettle in your room? No kettle in your room, unfortunately. Um, the maximum voltage in for the plugs in your rooms is a thousand volts. So for the ladies out there that have one of the powerful hair dryers, um, it is a case of going out into the corridor to dry your hair or being in the in the kitchen or common room. What will happen is that the the, the sockets will stop working, so it will trip all of the sockets in your room, and it is purely just for health and safety. I'm very sure some men will be using hair dryers as well, Michelle. Well, <laughs> yourself included. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I haven't got my hair cut in a while. I need to use it. Um, do most second years remain in BT1, BT2 or BT9 or do they stay in houses? So it's a mixture. Um, returning students this year have um, the option of BT1, BT2 um, and also Grant House, which is um, an accommodation block just on the on the Malone Road. Um, again, BT9, the the bulk of BT9 is kept for first year, so you wouldn't you wouldn't be returning to that to that area if, if you're coming back to us. Okay. Uh, what is actually included in the kitchen and bedding packs that can be purchased? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> We do have, if you go onto the website and under the frequently asked questions section, it actually tells you. So for the kitchen, or sorry, for the bedding pack, you will receive um, a duvet, a pillow, a mattress protector, a sheet, pillow cover, and a duvet cover. In the kitchen pack, you get one of everything basically. So you will have um, a dinner plate, a side plate, a knife, a fork, be a chopping board, there's knives, um, there's a ladle, there's a frying pan, there's a, um, a couple of different sizes of pots. Um, I think that's about everything. But as I say, it, it's on, if you go to the website, there is a section there and, and it will tell you exactly in case I've missed something. Yes. All the essentials you need anyway. Yeah. Um, more people are going to change options. You're going to get a few emails after this, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> what is included? Oh, sorry, I've just answered that one. Um, 
Will a single fitted sheet for the large will a single fitted sheet fit the large single mattress? Getting a wee bit specific here. If it's in BT one or two, no, it won't. Um, okay. we we have had to get them specially made, believe it or not. So I think it's um it's either eight or ten pounds, and you get the fitted sheet and the mattress protector, um, for BT one and two, and you can purchase that whenever you arrive. Okay. Uh, if lockdown ends before June, will the Elms accommodation tours continue? Do you have any information about tours? They, if, if lockdown is lifted, we would um, be anticipating that our open days, I mean, I think we've, we've quite a few arranged for June and also for August. If we're allowed to, we want to do them. Um, but, you know, at, at the minute, I'm just not sure, especially with the June ones, I'm just not sure if that's going to happen. But again, okay. if if the students follow us on Facebook um, and on Twitter, we will we'll post updates on there. Perfect. This is going to be our last question, Michelle, and it's a bit of a random one, but a good <laughs> question nonetheless. How do we go about changing our light bulbs? Example, the ones that can be activated by Alexa. You know those ones where you tell Alexa to turn the light bulb on? Do they work in, in Elms? They maybe do in the city centre. I don't yeah. think that something um, like that would work in BT9. I'm, I'm just not 100% sure. Um, but oh, I can't, that's one I can't answer. I spot for that one, Michelle. <laughs> sorry. Um, and just one last question that's come in should be easy to answer. Do we have to purchase the bedding pack or can we bring our own? You have the option. So you can purchase it. You're, you're not required to or you can bring your own. Great. Michelle, that's all the, the questions at the minute. If people do have more questions, um, feel free. We will we will send you out uh, an email after this event, which will give you the recording of what we've just discussed. And it will also give you options to get in contact with accommodation specifically or to the student recruitment team. So if you have any more queries, you can get in contact with us through that. Thank you, Michelle. No, thank you. Right, well, I'm going to finish off. And um, before I do that, I just quickly want to, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased that this has been such a, a fantastic uh, interactive forum. Michelle, you've provided us with some, you know, really, really useful information, some top tips, and literally just to reiterate what, what Michelle has been saying uh, for the last hour or so is that, you know, we, we do offer this fantastic service. Our accommodation costs are some of the cheapest in the UK. Um, the quality of our accommodation is exceptional. We are regularly sort of, you know, commended for the quality of, of our accommodation. Um, the inclusive pricing uh, means that it's very easy for you to budget. It also means that sort of managing your finances becomes that little bit easier. Accommodation, as Michelle said, is guaranteed for the first year. Um, and that's irrespective of, of when you apply. So as Michelle was saying that if you apply through clearing, then please rest assured, there are a number of rooms that are ring fenced for our clearing applicants. And once again, you know, as Michelle was saying, they might not be your choice, but at least you are assured of being in university owned accommodation. And that's really useful because as you've gone through uh, your presentation, you know, the, the safety and security of our students is paramount. You're guaranteed that, you know, your parents, your carers and, and, um, and yourself, you can rest assured that you will be looked after. There's plenty of support available throughout our accommodation choices. So whether you choose to stay at Elms, whether you choose to stay at um, in our city centre accommodation or this uh, new accommodation uh, in uh, that Michelle has been talking about, the, the postgraduate one, Mount Charles, uh, rest assured that, that you will be safe, you will be looked after. Um, it is a fantastic opportunity to get to know new people. And, and I know from my university experiences that uh, you know, people that I met in the first year in halls are people that I 
you know, have made lifelong friends with. So it really is, um, is a wonderful opportunity to meet somebody outside of your comfort zone. Um, for our international students and for our GB students, again, as Michelle was saying, you know, the allocation is purely done on the basis that, you know, when you apply, so make sure that when you apply to your course, you also apply for your uh, accommodation. The earlier you apply, you know, the better chance you have. I think it's safe to say, Michelle, of getting the accommodation yes. of choice. Um, um, the time scales that she has given really are quite important. So just please make a note of those. So uh, there are really three stages. You need to make sure that you apply on time and then when allocations start opening and your offer is is firm i.e we make you the offer and you accept it and as michelle was saying once that happens you get to the next stage of the allocation process wherein you start showing in michelle's sort of um, list of people who need a room um, she then sends you uh, well, the accommodation team then sends you um, uh, an intimation to say that you know you are on our radar and then you've got two days to to pay your deposit pretty much uh to be assured the room of your choice so i think that that's key sort of the key sort of takeaway from this is um there is accommodation it's guaranteed and you it's very likely that you will get a room of your choice but you need to adhere to some of those uh guidelines there and last but not the least, you know, your deposit will be refunded, but that will be done after your tenure is finished. It is a 38 week contract in most cases. And as Michelle was saying, you know, you, you cannot cancel it halfway through. So before you take that decision, make sure it is the right one. But that doesn't mean that if you have made a preference now and you want to change it, that's not possible because Michelle is going to provide her contact details and you can do that. Would you say that covers everything, Michelle? Absolutely. The other thing is, is that, you know, once you check in um, and if the room is not your first preference, we can put you on a wait list. Now, because September is such a busy month, we tend not to allow students to, um, to move rooms at that point, just because we're still waiting on everyone arriving and all the students coming in. So normally from about Halloween on, if you have put, if you have put that you're, that you do want to move, we will then look at the wait list and see where we have rooms available. And if it is the room that you um, wanted initially and we have it available, you can then, you can then change, you can then move to that room. Right. Well, on, on that note, um, I just want to thank both Michelle and Raymond for uh, a, a very, very useful session. Um, and I just want to reiterate that uh, this is the third webinar that we are doing in the series of student life web webinars that the, uh, the recruitment team are running for both applicants for the 2020 entry, but also for those of you who are interested in applying for us. Uh, in 2021 and the years uh, and the years to come. So the next seminar in our student life series will be held next Tuesday. And as I said to you before, it is a talk on careers and employability and the support that we provide to our students. Um, following that on Thursday, there will be a seminar uh, that focuses on student disability and student well-being. Both of those are held at uh, British Standard Time, 11 a.m. And booking is available from exactly the same um, sort of booking area within our, our student uh, section of a holder site of our website. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for participating, for all your questions and for bearing with us. Uh, we appreciate that this is a very difficult, unprecedented time. Uh, but we are all, Raymond, myself and Michelle, very much looking forward to welcoming you to Queen's. And if you, if you have any questions or if you have any queries, then please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.